Hello and welcome to another episode of Real Talk with Terry. And in honor of National Women's History Month, I'm excited to have Miss Angela DiBono here from the 100 Black Women of Silicon Valley. And we are going to jump right in. Angela, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Terry, for having me. Thank you for being here. So could you just, first of all, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do for the local chapter of the 100 Black Women? Yes. So my name is Angela DeBono, mm -hmm. and I am the Vice President of Membership. Okay. My real goal is to be able to help bring women of color together to be able to discuss issues that are going on within the community. Awesome. And we, so we can make positive changes. Awesome. And could you just um, tell me a little bit of the history of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women and kind of when did you guys come here to Silicon Valley and what was the inspiration to bring the organization local? Yes. So the organization was actually started in 1964 awesome. by a group of 100 women who wanted to support the marches that were going down on in the South. Mm -hmm. These were around voting rights and white-only privileges that were going on. Got it. But they wanted to expand mm -hmm. um, to be able to address issues that were going on nationally. Mm -hmm. So they created the National Coalition of 100 Black Women. Got it. And now we are 7,000 strong with awesome. 62 chapters That's across great. the country. Awesome. That's amazing. That's amazing growth. And when did you guys found, um, found your chapter here locally in Silicon Valley? We started our chapter here in 1996. Okay. We really wanted to be focused on health, education, economic policies, mm -hmm. and a lot more issues that are going on here specifically in Silicon Valley. Absolutely. That's great. So we're going to um, talk about some of your programming because I know you guys have some really awesome programs coming up. Um, in fact, my daughter actually participated in your STEM day for girls last year. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's first of all um, talk about that program, your STEM conference that's coming up. Um, could you just tell the viewers a little bit more about the STEM conference, um, what you're looking for? Because um, I know that young ladies can still register for that? Yes. Okay. Our STEM program is actually our signature program. Awesome. We actually have Peace Smart where we raise money through our jazz brunch mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. Where we send girls for, um, pretty much uh, grades from fourth to eighth grade okay. to summer camp programs that are basically STEM related. Okay. And we are actually accepting applications right now. Okay. So the viewers can actually go to your site for an app application, download it for their daughter, fill it out, and it'll have the instructions on how to send it back That's to right. register. Okay, perfect. And um, in terms, is there a cost associated with this event? No. We raise the money ourselves to be able to send the girls to camp. Okay. So the only thing we really want is for girls of color mm -hmm. to have a real interest and passion, obviously, for some type of science, technology, engineering, or math. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times these girls are not quite sure what they're passionate about until they're exposed to it. Okay. So we just want them to come and we'll just see what they're interested in doing. So could you just tell us what the day is going to look like for the girls? Like what could they expect when they get there until they leave? Right. So they'll arrive around 8 a.m. Okay. They'll be greeted over at Cisco. We'll have a little introduction and then we'll break them off into their different groups and segments. Okay. They'll be doing different type of experiments for mm -hmm. chemistry, nice. dry ice, mm -hmm. um, high tech events and okay. things like that. We'll, nice. we'll feed them lunch. Mm -hmm. And then in the afternoon, we're going to actually have someone presenting things around cybersecurity issues, nice. helping them to understand that. That's great. And then pretty much their day will end okay. right after awesome. that, around 3 o'clock. Around 3 o'clock. And this is no charge to the young lady. Ladies, this is a free event, and this is, like you said, your signature program that you do for the community. Yes. Awesome. Now, um, what are some of your other programs? I know your STEM program for girls is kind of your signature program, but I was on your website, so I know you guys have a lot of other programming. So if you maybe just want to share with the community some of the other community events, because these are all community-based events yes. that um, just maybe tell us um, some other things that you have coming down the pipeline. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's actually Tech Day. Mm -hmm. We actually have a much further event where we actually do send those same girls to camp for the summer mm -hmm. for awesome. um, 
for a few days, mm -hmm. depending on how many girls. And generally, it's about 25 girls. And nice. that's our jazz brunch that's coming up on mm -hmm. April 29th. Mm -hmm. That's where we raise the money to be able to send these girls to these different programs. Right, because the camp is, there's again, there's no charge to the young there's ladies. There's no charge to the young ladies. Absolutely. So then they get invited back to a camp. And then in, in addition to the camp, you have, um, what we have, we have uh, health programs that we right. do. Uh, we do HIV awareness for seniors. Mm -hmm. We actually reach about a thousand seniors per year. Nice. And we educate them on mostly, you know, HIV, mm -hmm. safe sex practices. Absolutely. We also have Candidly Speaking. Candidly Speaking is another monthly program that awesome. we do within the community. Really? This is something that we wanted to do based on a lot of the sort of issues that's been going on with social media. Mm -hmm. we, we actually bring different cultures together to discuss various different issues the old-fashioned way. Nice. And we do that at the Joyce Ellington Library. Nice. And this is a monthly event. Mm -hmm. We're and actually going to have it on April the 4th. This awesome. Year. So any of your programming, if people want to know um, what's going on with the 100 Black Women, they can just go to your website because you have the event flyers, the dates, if there's a registration, it's on your website. So they That's can right. do that. And we'll definitely um, have a link up to the website so that people can kind of look at the website and what you guys have coming down the pipeline. I appreciate that You're very welcome. much. You're welcome. Absolutely. So the other thing, and this is primarily what your role is in the organization as vice president of membership, you guys also have a membership drive coming up so could you just tell us a little bit more about that our membership drive starts actually on April the 1st tomorrow tomorrow oh. <laughs> we're gonna Sorry, April. <laughs> so soon mm -hmm. we're actually gonna be bringing in new members okay um, having a chance to be able to really expand our reach within the community so okay. we're going to be having a mixer coming nice. up okay um in may so that they can actually come and join a little bit more and learn a little bit more about us okay yeah and in terms of um what you're looking for in terms of new members could you just tell the people the community out here what are you looking for yeah, really the right women are, that will be right for our organization mm -hmm. are risk takers, women that are actually involved in the community, mm -hmm. people that want to be advocates for women of color, mm -hmm. and more than that, women that are really passionate, passionate about really getting out there and doing work. Awesome. We are an advocacy group, which mm -hmm. means that we're not just sitting behind the computer. Mm -hmm. We do everything from legislative day, we do programs around anxiety and depression, nice. we want to bring um, economic empowerment to women so we do a series where we do financial literacy for mm -hmm. women okay so we're not sitting on our hands nice that's awesome and um, in terms of um, the process so the women would come to the mixer and then from there um, do they um, or do you invite them to be members or do they fill out an application or do they learn more about that at your mixer yes actually okay. membership is by invitation only Got so it. you do actually have to go through a process of filling out an application mm -hmm. and submitting in a $50 fee. Mm -hmm. You go through an interview, there'll be mm -hmm. an orientation, and then you'll know if you're going to be accepted from the group. Awesome. That's great. And how big is your chapter here? Right now, we're 35 strong. Nice. Yes. That's a good number. It is. That's for a, a transient yes. city. It really is. <laughs> You're right. And when you say transient city, because people kind of come and they might get transferred out because of their job. So, or well, there's just not a lot of African American women mm -hmm. in the community. Okay. Because they mostly come here to work. And when, mm -hmm. obviously, when it's time to go, they just get up transferred somewhere else. Absolutely. So, and we try to stay as strong as we can. Strong okay. and mighty. Is yes, what strong and mighty. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, good luck with your membership drive. You. And I'm excited about the programs that you have coming up. And um, the, you kind of touched on this, but I want to talk a little bit more about it. And um, we're going to take a quick break. But if you can just share with us, you have your jazz brunch coming up, yes. which is your fundraiser. Yes. And is this the only fundraiser that you guys do every year? This is our primary cool. fundraiser. We do a lot of partnerships where we do partner with 100 black women, mm -hmm. I mean 100 black men, excuse me. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> the African American Community mm -hmm. Center. So we do a lot of actually strategic alliances and partnerships to be able to help to raise money, but this is really our signature. Awesome. And what does the day look like in terms of the jazz brunch? Like who is the feature guest? And um, could you tell us a little bit more about what does the day look like? Yeah, oh my gosh, it's a really <laughs> exciting day. Mm -hmm. You come in and actually get a chance to hear some real, real, real jazz. Nice. Food is served. We have mm -hmm. unlimited mimosas. We have Tony Alexander going to be joining right. us. Nice. Yes. Okay. Nice. <laughs> and Milan is our host. Nice. <laughs> 
And then you know, nice. Milan brings his spice. <laughs> yes, of course, absolutely. Yeah. And um, we'll have some more information about the um, fundraiser. We have the flyer. Okay. We'll share Thank that you. absolutely. So again, people they'll be able to purchase tickets. Um, the link they can actually purchase it online at our website awesome. www.ncbw-svc.org. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Thank you. Well, we're gonna um, take a break and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk. We're gonna finish up talking about the 100 Black Women and the things that you guys are doing here. Oh, hey, wonderful. Thank you. Welcome back to Real Talk with Terry and Angela. I just want to talk a little bit more about a couple of programs that you have because I feel like they're so important and so relevant in the community right now. I just don't want people to miss what you guys are offering. And the one thing that I first want to talk a little bit more about is you mentioned that you guys have a healthcare seminar or a workshop, and you mentioned for seniors. And one thing that you were able to clarify for me over the break because I was thinking um, because of a another study that I read that you were talking about health care for senior citizens and HIV awareness and all of that but you were actually talking about seniors in high school yes okay <laughs> so I definitely want to talk a little bit more about that program primarily because as a parent I actually read something about a week and a half maybe two weeks ago where there's a school a high school in a city um, here in the United States and there was an alarming number of the high school students it was I don't know if it was a number something like 1200 or 1100 but it was an alarming number of students that actually tested positive for like STDs including some HIV and for me as a parent that was just very distressing and it was heartbreaking to read because these are young people being exposed to yeah. major illnesses that are contracted through sexual contact at such an young, such a young age. So first of all, I want to commend you guys on offering an amazing program like that to high school seniors, but I just want to hear a little bit more about it and I definitely want you to encourage the parents and the young people to come out to this program. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It is still an ongoing issue. Mm -hmm. We actually started the program in the 90s when we started to really realize that children were really not taking it very seriously about being protected. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to create an initiative that worked with generally in the area of children of color and mm -hmm. we started working with many schools in the East Bay like nice. Piedmont High School mm -hmm. and we started going in and actually not only training the teachers but the actual students themselves around the importance of using protection right. and AIDS. And it really is still an ongoing issue today within the African American community. You're absolutely right. It's, it's an ongoing issue. And with all of the resources that are out there, because you guys do outreach, I know that there's other organizations that do outreach. Do you guys have any idea, any indication why we still have an issue with young people not protecting themselves is it because they're young and <laughs> adventurous <laughs> do we have any idea why <laughs> you know i think that a lot of the issue really sort of stems around again this sort of lack of education right mm -hmm. a lot of times people feel like that's something that happened back then and the issue has been solved mm -hmm. or that we have so many pills today that are able to really fix the issue and mm -hmm. it's just not the case right it's important that we keep the awareness going on and mm -hmm. we don't slack off enough. right absolutely and um, just for the viewers if a parent was interested in their children or their child attending a workshop are you guys do you partner with schools or do you so how could a parent get their child plugged into one of your workshops or programs we actually have one coming up nice. on April the 12th okay and uh, they can actually go and sign up Okay. Um, on our website mm -hmm. and learn more information about it. Okay, so this one is um, they don't have to be at a particular school. This is just a community event. It's a community event. Nice. Yes. Go to your website, sign up, and attend. So 
please do that. <laughs> yes, it's very, very important. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, because that is just so distressing as a parent. I mean, I almost couldn't believe it that that many young people actually tested positive for STDs. I mean, it was just, it was mind boggling that one, that, that at such a young age they would be sexually active and then two, that they wouldn't be using protection. So again, um, there's community programs out there like what the 100 Black Women of Silicon Valley has. It's a free event. So there's actually no excuse or no reason why exactly. parents should not be getting their children involved, you know, because sometimes I think parents probably want to turn a blind eye and, and say, well, no, my child is not doing whatever, but exactly. it's better to be safe than sorry. Much better to be safe than Even sorry. if they are not, it's much better to be informed. And when you have professionals and organizations out there willing to give the information, there's no reason why parents should not take advantage of it. So thank you ladies for offering that program um, because I'm so glad we talked a little bit more about that because when you initially said that, I know I can't be the only one who thought. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. <laughs> who thought? Because I just thought because of another study that I read about senior citizens that that talked about senior citizens and some of them who had been married for years, you yes. know, they become widowers and then they find themselves out into the dating scene or they're just out meeting people, mingling, dating and having fun. And at an alarming rate, there were a number of senior citizens at one point That's contracting STDs and HIV yes. because the dating scene had changed yes, since yes. they had been married for a number of years. And that's distressing as well. And I just took for granted because of that study. That's what you meant when you <laughs> said working seniors. with seniors. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that makes sense as a result of that study. It that is was important to bring awareness to them as, as well. well. <laughs> so everybody. Yes. So not just our young people, but just bringing information to the community. That's right. So that's great. Okay. So we have that program coming up on April 12th. Yes. And we definitely want to encourage parents to get your children signed up for that. Again, this is a free community event. And um, Angela, another program that, again, is is very important in the community, especially in our community, the African American community, is financial planning and um, financial literacy. Yes, yes. And I know you guys have another wonderful community event coming up that's open for people to come to. Could you tell us a little bit more about your financial literacy program? Yes, it's actually a partnership that we actually do mm -hmm. um, with a, a program called My Sister's Keeper. Nice. We actually will put on, uh, work with Chase to be able to put on this event. Mm -hmm. They actually come and do some education around investments. Nice. the importance of saving, how to put money aside. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so not, not only that, you can, you're able to really build some aspects, no matter where you are in your sort of financial um, brackets, mm -hmm. to be able to still put money aside so that you can have financial freedom. Absolutely. And achieve those goals that you actually want to achieve. Nice. That's something that's very, very important to us. It's, it's very important. <laughs> and again, it's, you know, that's something where it's like, um, it's very distressing when you hear about people, again, another study. Another study. Another study. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Another study that you may have seen that's kind of been going around the internet this last week and a half that talks about um, minority boys from wealthy families um, that even though they, they come from wealth, for some reason, I guess research has shown that they don't maintain that wealth at the same level that their white counterparts do. I did, did read you see that, that article. It was very, very interesting. It's very interesting. And there's some thoughts on that. Some people are like, oh, no, it's not true. But I can actually kind of look around me and I can see examples of that yeah. where young African-American or black and brown boys that I know from affluent and wealthy families, oh, yes. you know, sometimes when they hit, they just talked about how when they hit adversity or whatever, how they just seem to not rebound from it yeah. almost as quickly yes. as the girls do yes. and that you don't see that same thing from girls. So it's so important just having a strong financial background and literacy and, and, and just knowing how to manage your wealth. Knowing how to manage your money and your wealth is yes. so very, very so important. important. And I still think that even today that we can still build wealth and if we understand the importance of how to save money, Absolutely. Um, how to invest money. 
um, not just within our community, but for ourselves. Absolutely. Yes. And what are investments and, and kind of the consumables? Because I always remember when uh, people talk about, you know, we as African Americans, we have so much spending power. It's in the billions and probably more now. Mm. But how we spend it, we don't look at retaining and passing it on right. like other cultures do we don't look at what can i pass on to my children or what am i leaving my children or even sometimes how am i helping my children yes. how am i helping set them up because yes. sometimes i think about you know the person that's in the white house how you know I, I, forgive me if i'm getting the story wrong but his dad gave him like a million dollars that's right to basically play with and go start his life with that's right you know so that's i'm like right. that must have been a nice start must have been it nice must have been a nice jump start to just get a million dollars. I think what I got was I was able to get a college degree and graduate um, with a very small amount of loans. <laughs> and That's it was right. like, okay, have That's a nice right. life That's right. That's and we'll right. help you get your first car. That's right. And that's it. But, wow. you know, to be able to get a million dollars to start your first company, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> My parents actually did the right way. They mm -hmm. actually sat down with us and nice. taught us how to budget, the importance of putting money aside. Yes. And I still think that's relevant today. So even really? without those million dollars, we could still end up. Absolutely. Ahead. We can still plant seeds and teach our children, right. you know, the importance of money, how money works, right. how to save, how to pass on. So that's these right. are great programs that you guys are Thank offering that are you. free to the community free to the community we do have one that mm -hmm. starts tomorrow as okay. well Which for one is anxiety nice. um and depression mm -hmm. um it is actually going to be led by uh, one of our members who's nice. actually in uh, um, in the community right now so she's actually going to be leading that nice. so hopefully then you can join us mm -hmm. for that event okay and that event is how to handle Anxiety, anxiety and, and depression, depression, which is are very important um, issues affecting our community. Because again, um, one thing that I know, um, a lot of minority women, African American women, we tend to suffer in silence. We do tend to suffer in suffer silence. Suffer in silence. <laughs> and that's not a good thing. Um, so no. that's a great program. Now, we this, I don't know if it will air. Well, obviously it won't air before no. tomorrow. No but do you, no, but do you you have um, does, is this an ongoing program for the organization do you periodically have it or is it do you, is it in your rotation of events oh great question so actually we do actually have different events that we actually do bring up for the community we may have another event like this awesome. one again it's because it's very much needed very much very much needed so thank you so much for coming this has been great thank information you so much for having me and talking absolutely. with us and helping us to share all that we're doing with the community absolutely now, before we close, is there anything else that you want the um, community to know about the 100 Black Women of Silicon Valley? Any programs, any outreach, or just anything else that you want to share that we may not have already covered? Feel free to. <laughs> well, we've definitely already covered the Jazz Brunch. Please join us. Um, on April the 29th uh, for our annual Jazz Brunch. We are going to be um, accepting new memberships, so please join us at Total Wines for some wine tasting for a little mix and mingle on Cherry Avenue starting at 1 o'clock. Awesome. Thank you so much. So this has been great, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad you were able to make it out. And again, in honor of Women's History Month, <laughs> I'm honored to highlight the 100 Black Women of Silicon Valley. And I just like to leave um, everybody on a positive note. Um, just remember that um, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, and today is a gift, which is why we call it the present. So make this 24 hours count. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Real Talk with Terry, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank, and thank you. you. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> this is wonderful. Let's work. Bye. 
get him. Never been, uh-uh, never been a scary type. Since I crossed it over like a soldier, I've been earning stripes. See me on that court and my attorney just gonna put in work. Shooting on one leg. Yeah, you can call me dirt. Sitting at the top, I'm just making an obsession. Ain't trying to be no washer, but I do have some confession.